Excel if function, everything you need to know in one video. Now this is going to be your one-stop shopping for how to use the if function. These 12 examples from a logical formula to bonus commission and overtime if function formulas. We'll see a great income statement formula, how to use the or function inside of if, the and function inside of if. We'll look at nested ifs. We'll look at a really bad use for the if, if array formulas, and of course, is functions too. Now, oftentimes people think, hey, the if function is hard. It's not hard at all. And we'll start off with a very simple example that illustrates the essence of what the if function does. If this is the hurdle in order for you to get $750 bonus, looking at this number, because it's less than the hurdle, we need a 0 in the cell. But this sales number is greater than the hurdle, so we need $750 in the cell. Any Anytime you have one of two things to put in a cell, that's when you use the if function. Now before we use if, we got to talk about what a logical formula is. A logical formula simply delivers true or false. For our formula in this column, we want a formula that delivers true or false based on what the contract reads. It says if an employee has sales of $20,000 or more, they get a bonus of $750. Now for our formula in our first example, we don't want the 0 and the $750. I just want to show true or false. Now before we can build logical formulas, we got to go over to the sheet Comparative Operators. And there's our six comparative operators. We can ask if something's equal, greater than, greater than or equal to, less than, less than or equal to, and not. You can use this table to figure out what the words mean and which comparative operator to use. Back over on sheet number one, we're going to build our formula, equal sign, left arrow to get as a relative cell reference, the sales for each row. And now I need to ask the question of those sales. Are you greater than or equal to? And I click on the hurdle. Now when I copy this formula down, I need it locked on the hurdle. So I hit the F4 key. Now the reason that we had to use greater than or equal to is because our boss is nice. If we get exactly 20,000, we actually get the bonus. That's the equal sign. Everything greater than will also get the bonus. Now, because we used a comparative operator, when we Control Enter to put the formula in the cell and keep the cell selected, we will always get either true or false. Now, I'm going to point to the fill handle in the lower right-hand corner. And when I move my selection cursor on top, not that cursor, that's the move cursor. I want the crosshair or angry rabbit cursor. Now I can double click to copy that formula down. Now I go to the last cell and hit the F2 key. I'm verifying that the relative cell reference, the blue cell reference, and the absolute or lock cell reference, the orange one, are pointing in the correct location. And they are. That type of logical formula is what we're going to use inside the if function to deliver either 750 or 0. Enter. Now let's click on sheet number 2. Now what we really want is 0 or 750. So now we use equals and the if function. Now there's three arguments. The logical test, that's where we put our formula element that delivers true or false. Then the remaining part of the if is easy. What do you want to put in the cell if it's true? What do you want to put in the cell if it's false? So left arrow, and we're going to do the same logical test because our contract says 20,000 or more. So I click on the hurdle F4. Now I type a comma, value of true wants to know what the formula should put in the cell if it's true. Well, there it is, 750. I hit the F4 key to lock it, comma. Now the value of false argument, because this number will never change, it's a 0. I'm simply going to type it into the formula. Close parentheses, Control Enter, double click and send it down. In the last cell, I hit the F2 key. I'm verifying that all the cell references are pointing in the correct location, and they are. Now if the bonus was actually 950, I change it, hit Enter, and everything updates. Now in this case, we put one of two numbers into each cell. 
Example number three, we want to put one of two text items into each cell. Here's the total data used, and the hurdle is 1. And we want to put either over the hurdle or under. But the contract reads, if your data is under 1 gigabyte per month, you do not pay extra. Now, we're not worrying about the paying extra. We just want to put one of these two text items. So in the top cell, equals if. The logical test, well, I'm looking at this relative cell reference, and I have to ask the question, are you less than? This hurdle right here, F4 key. That comes out true or false. Now I type a comma. The value if true, well, it's going to be our value under F4 to lock it, comma. The value if false, uh-oh, you're over. Hit the F4 key. Close parentheses. Control Enter. Double click and send it down. In the last cell, hit F2. Our goal was one of two text items. No problem. The if function can do that too. Now in sheet number four, here are the employee sales. And the contract says if sales are more than 30K, you earn a 5% bonus, otherwise 1%. This is the true value. This is the false. There's the hurdle. And 30,000 is not included. It says more than equals the if function. We need to look at our sales. Are you greater than, without the equal sign, a hurdle, F4 key, comma, the value of true, that's our 0.05, F4 to lock it, comma, the value of false, well, you still get 1%, F4, close parentheses. Now, this is going to deliver one of two numbers to the cell. Control Enter, double click and send it down. I'm verifying. But that's not quite what we want. So I come back to the top cell and F2. My cursor's at the end. Notice the if is delivering one of two numbers to the cell. But if we times and click on the sales, now it's simply delivering one of two numbers to the formula, which is exactly what we want. This will give us our commission amount. Control Enter, double click and send it down. And that is looking good. So in this case, we're delivering one of two numbers to a formula. By the way, don't get tricked here. If you click in the cell and look up in the formula bar, that is not 30,000, whereas this one is not 30,000 either. If we highlight these numbers, go up to the number group, and increase the decimals, 1, 2, we can see that the number formatting was displaying the numbers. But the underlying numbers are what these two formulas acted on. So the formulas calculated 300 and 1,500 correctly. Now let's go to example number five. This is a payroll example. We have to compare weekly totals to the number 40 and ask the question, hey, total hours, are you greater than 40? F4 to lock it. If that's true, comma, then we need to put a 40 for total regular hours, F4, comma. Otherwise, all we need is the weekly total. Close parentheses, Control Enter, double click and send it down. After verifying, we come up into overtime hours and we say, hey, give us the total minus whatever the regular hours are. Control Enter. When I copy this down, anybody who's not past 40 gets a 0. Otherwise, we have the correct overtime hours. Now let's go to Sheet 6. In this accounting example, we want to put one of two text items into a cell, either net loss or net income. The logical test, we're going to check total expenses. Are you greater than revenue, comma? And in this case, the text that we're putting in the formula will never change, so we're going to hard code it into the formula. Net loss in double quotes, that's the value of true. Otherwise, net income in double quotes, close parentheses. When I hit Enter, right now it says net income. But if this value actually was 49,000, I hit Enter. And now it properly says net loss. Example 7 and 8, sometimes it's the case that we have two logical tests. If our goal for each customer is to check whether at least one of these credit ratings are past the hurdle, we can use the OR function. In logical 1, we check credit rating. And in this case, the contract says greater than or equal to the hurdle, F4. Now I type a comma. Logical 2, there's the second credit rating. 
greater than or equal to the hurdle, F4. Now the OR function runs an OR logical test, which means it looks through every single logical test you enter. And as soon as it sees one or more trues, it automatically delivers a true to the cell. So I close parentheses, Control Enter, double click and send it down. In the first row, we can see false, true. So of course, OR delivers a true. In the second row, we get two trues, OR delivers a true. It's only when there's false, false, meaning all the logical tests turn out to be false, that the OR function delivers a false. Now we put the whole OR function in the logical test argument, comma, and then we put value if true, comma, value if false. Then when we enter it and copy it down, we have a formula that tells us which customer gets credit and which does not. Now sometimes we want two logical tests, but we want to check if both logical tests come out true. In that case, we use an AND logical test. Just like the OR function, the AND function allows you to put as many logical tests as you want. We're going to check if last year's sales are greater than the hurdle. The contract says it must be past the hurdle, F4. Comma, and our second test is asset value, are you past the hurdle of 300K? F4, close parentheses, Control Enter, double click and send it down. The only two records that get a true from the AND function are when both values are past the hurdle. Then we place the AND function inside the logical test of the IF, then put your value if true, value if false. When we enter it and copy it down, now based on a completely different rule, we have customers that get extended credit and ones that do not get credit based on an AND logical test. Now on sheet number nine, we have a payroll calculation where in this cell we need one of three things. If your cumulative pay before this paycheck is already greater than the hurdle, then none of your earnings are taxable. If your cumulative pay before the paycheck was less than the hurdle, and then after the paycheck it was bigger than the hurdle, then only part of this week's pay is taxable. And then the final situation is, if your cumulative pay after this paycheck is still below the hurdle, then your whole paycheck is taxed. When you have three or more things that you want to put in the cell, then you want to consider a nested if formula. We'll start out our formula with a logical test. I'm just going to check, hey, before this paycheck, have we already passed the hurdle, F4, comma? Well, we know the answer to that. It's 0. Now we type a comma. Anytime you get to value if false and there's two or more items remaining, then we have to type another if. Now I check the cumulative at the end. Are you greater than the hurdle, F4? If that's the case, that means we just jumped over the hurdle and comma. The value of true is hurdle minus whatever the cumulative pay was before this paycheck. Otherwise, please give us the whole paycheck. Now I see this F8. I have to F4 to lock it. Now, when you come to the end, you keep typing parentheses until you see the black one, and you know you're done. Control Enter, double click, and send it down. I'm going to go to the last cell and hit F2. Now, notice we had three items that needed to go into a cell. I'm going to hit Enter. We're going to go to our next example, 10. There is a nested if function that you don't want to ever use. The nested if is checking through each one of these items. But really, when we're given a table like this, this is the formula we want to do, VLOOKUP. If we're doing approximate match, like for units, you want to consider using lookup. Now example number 11. Now in Excel, we have a bunch of great built-in functions for making aggregate calculations. The average ifs averages the numbers if the product is quad. There are also aggregate calculations for counting and for adding if a particular condition is met. The problem is, not all aggregate calculations have an equivalent ifs function. For example, there's no standard deviation ifs. Well, we can use our standard deviation function. And right inside the number one argument, we can type out the if function. Inside of logical test, we build a construction where we ask how many of you in that column are equal to the condition. And for value of true, we put the numbers. That's it. We don't put anything into false. 
close parentheses on the if. And right inside of number 1, when I hit the F9 key, you can see that the if function has gotten the three numbers we need. For the quad product, control Z. And at the end, I'm going to close parentheses. Now, this is a special type of calculation called an array calculation, where we're looking at a full column. And you have to enter this formula using the special keystroke, control shift enter. And you have to verify that Excel put in automatically those curly brackets. Then you can copy the formula down and verify that it's working in the last cell. Here, we used an array calculation and the if function to pick out only the numbers that meet a specific condition. In our last example, we need a checkbook balance formula. But when nothing's entered here, I don't want the formula to calculate. In the logical test, I want to check using the is functions. Now, there's lots of different is functions. The one we're going to use is is number. We're going to check whether someone has entered a date, which is a number. That comes out true or false. For all of these, it comes out true. But down here, it comes out false, comma. Well, what do I want in the cell if it's a number? I want to calculate the balance. Previous balance minus whatever's in the subtract column plus what's ever in the addition column. So we're putting a formula in value if true, comma. Otherwise. I need to show nothing. And the syntax for that in an Excel formula is double quote, double quote, with nothing in between. That actually is considered text with zero length. But for us, when I close parentheses, Control Enter, copy it down. Down here, it's showing nothing. But as soon as I put a date, and hit the Tab key, my formula shows up. When I enter the subtract number by hitting Enter, the formulas update. Using the is blank, here's another way we could have created this formula. We also could have used is text. All right, that was a lot of fun with the if function. 12 awesome examples in your one-stop shopping if function video. Hey, if you like that video, be sure to click that thumbs up, leave a comment, and subscribe, because there's always lots more videos to come from Excel is Fun. Hey, and if you want to learn more about the index function or formulas, check out these videos.